Hello and welcome to part 15 of video series in the Blender Game Engine. In this video, we'll be showing you how to create a pause function in your game so your player, quite obviously, can pause the game while they're playing it. Let's go ahead and jump in. I'll click on the splash screen to get rid of it. The first thing I'll do is I'll create a really simple active scene. I'm not actually going to have a playable game, but I want to be able to pause it. So we're actually just going to make a game that will have a falling cube with no controls other than just the pause function. So I'll move the cube straight up and I'll press Shift A and I'll add a mesh plane in my world. I'll press S to scale it way up and I'll press zero on my numpad to go through my camera and I wanna orbit through my camera so I'll press N or this little plus up here but I'll bring up the properties panel and in the view section I'll lock my camera to the view so now I can orbit through my camera and I'll just sort of orbit out so I can see my whole scene. Maybe I'll make it more like that. And I'll select my cube and I'll drag it straight up. I'll press R to rotate it at some funny angle because I want it to fall straight down and I'll pause it as I would pause my game mid fall. Let's go ahead and change our render engine up to the Blender game engine. And so now if I press P, it'll play my game, but that cube is still a static object. So I'll press escape and over here in the properties window, under the physics tab, I'll change my physics type of this object to a rigid body object. So when it falls, it'll kind of tumble. It needs a collision bounds though, so I'll check that box. And now it'll have a collision bounds in the shape of a box. So if I press P to play my game, the cube will fall and it will uh, collide down with the ground and it will kind of bounce around like it probably normally would in real life, depending on its mass. Okay, so I've got a game, and I'm looking through my camera. That's all great. How do I create pausing? Well, we're going to start off by creating an actual overlay scene that's going to have the big word pause on it. So let's go ahead and actually we'll give this scene uh, a name. This is going to be my game. It can be a game level or a game screen, but this is the scene, the world that my 3D game is in. I'm gonna go ahead and press this plus to make a new scene in my game, and it's gonna be a brand new scene without any of the copied settings or uh, objects, so just new. I'm gonna name this scene um, Pause HUD. Hey, HUD stands for Heads Up Display. And it needs a few things. It needs a camera, so I'll press Shift A on my keyboard and add a camera. The camera, of course, is uh, rotated by default, so I'll press Control R or Alt R rather on my keyboard. Alt R uh, clears the rotation of a selected object. I'll move it straight up. I want this camera to be orthographic or a two-dimensional camera. So with it selected, I'll go to my camera tab and I'll change my camera to orthographic. I also have to change this new scene, this pause HUD scene over to the Blender game and render engine as well, just so we can test it if we need to. Let's go ahead and press zero on our numpad or go through the camera view. Uh, you can also go down to the view menu, of course, and go view camera, but it's numpad zero uh, if you have a number pad on your keyboard. Let's go ahead and add the thing that's gonna show up when you uh, press the pause button. In this case, we're going to make uh, the pause happen when you press P on your keyboard. Now, P is sort of a funny key to press for pause because P is actually, when you're testing or running your game in Blender, P is how you actually play the game. It starts the active playing mode, um, but P will also be the pause for the player as far as they know in the game. Let's go ahead and add what will show up on the screen when you're paused. I'll press Shift A. I'm going to just have the big word pause on my screen. So I'm going to add a text object right there, shift A for the add menu and text. Uh, to get in and edit the text, you press tab on your keyboard, of course, and then you can just press backspace. And I'm going to write pause just like that. I'll press tab to go back into object mode, or of course, you can switch between the two modes there. Uh, I'll put it right in the middle of the screen, and it's a two-dimensional orthographic camera, so it doesn't really matter how far away it is. Um, let's go ahead and convert this mesh or this text object to a mesh. So I'll press Alt-C on my keyboard, and I'll select Mesh from uh, Text, and that's Alt-C again. And let's go ahead and add a material to it. So under the Material tab in the Properties window, I'll add a new material. I'll click on Diffuse to give it a nice red color. And I don't want to have any kind of materialness or any shininess to it, so I'm just going to click on Shadeless, and that way it'll just be a solid red color with the Shadeless uh, checkbox under the Shading section of that window. Okay, so we have this pause, and let's position it, so I'll put it right kind of in the middle of my scene. But actually, because this scene is going to be a heads-up display that's always over top of our game, I don't want this pause to be here right away. And there's a few ways that I could do this, but I found the easiest way, especially for this video that's introductory to pausing. I'm just going to move it down below out of the camera's view, and then we'll make it pop up or move, actually, into the middle of the scene again. 
um, when you're paused, then when you press P again to unpause, it'll go back down. So it'll hide by moving itself, uh, not by using any sort of visibility. So what I'll do here is I'm going to look at these uh, squares, the grid on my screen. If you're watching this video in 720p or 1080p, that'll help. You might not see it if you're watching it at a lower resolution. I can see my grid here. Um, my pause is about one Blender unit high. So I want to move it from this point where the origin is. I want to move it down by one to probably three down on the uh, Y, that's the green Y axis. So if I press G and then Y and then negative three, it'll pop down there because the uh, I'll undo that. The Y, the direction that the gizmo is pointing is the positive direction. So again, G, Y, negative three, and I'll press enter on my keyboard. That's so, just so that we know how far to move it back and forth every time we pause and unpause the game. Okay, with this pause uh, text mesh, which is a mesh selected, I'm gonna make a new uh, logic editor window. So I'll grab this little cross hatch area up here and drag it straight down. And I will just sort of uh, pan up. Oops, I don't wanna do that. I've got my uh, GY negative three, it's down there. I've got my camera view uh, set to lock camera to view. So I'll uncheck that so now I can pan around. And, and zoom out so I can see my camera from a smaller or in a smaller size. Okay, let's go ahead and make this bottom window into a logic editor window. There it is. And I'll press, uh, actually I'll just scroll up or down to make this smaller. With this pause mesh selected, this is actually gonna be kind of the where the logic is for pausing our game. Now our game, if I switch back to the other scene, it has a scene name of game. So we're actually gonna be using the scene actuator to suspend and resume our game, but we're gonna do a few extra things to make this all really work. So let's go back to the uh, pause HUD scene, and I'm gonna add a sensor. It's gonna be a keyboard sensor, and this is where we get to choose what key on your keyboard you want to uh, use to pause your game. In this case, I'm gonna click on this button here and press, uh, it says press a key, so I'll press P on my keyboard. P will be my pause button. I'm not sure if it'll work if you use the escape key, and you'll see that uh, in the next video, um, why I might not use the escape key. I'll mention that when I record the next video in the series. Uh, so I'm just gonna use P. Now when you press P, I want a few things to happen. I want to suspend the other scene. And right now, we haven't actually set this scene up to be an overlay, but we can pretend that it is uh, for now. So let's go and add an actuator. It's gonna be the, the scene right there, scene actuator and I'll connect this up. So when you press P, it'll uh, do something with scenes. And I'm going to um, suspend a scene, and then I get to pick what scene I'm suspending. I'm gonna suspend the game scene. Okay, but when you press P, it's gonna suspend the scene. What about unpausing the game? What about resuming, that's the other option, resuming the scene? Well, I want P to act as a toggle. The P key, when you press it, if it's not paused, it'll pause it. And if it is paused, it'll unpause it. So what I actually have to do is create a property on this text mesh. Uh, and the properties are over here. If you're on a Windows PC, it'll be on the other side. When you press the little plus, it'll show up. I think it's on the other side on the Windows PC. Um, I'm gonna add a game property to this mesh. So I'll click on add game property, and I'll make it a bit wider so we can see it. The property type we're gonna add is a new one for this video series, and it's not a float. It's called a Boolean property or a Boolean variable. If you're a programmer, you'll know what this is. A Boolean variable or property in Blender basically only has two values. It can either be true or false. And when this little checkbox is checked, it's set to true at the beginning of the game. If you uncheck it, it's set to false at the beginning of the game. So we're gonna leave it unchecked because you're not paused when the game starts, I think. Uh, we're gonna name it uh, pause. So now this property is called pause. That's how we can refer to it. And it's gonna be set to false by default. What I wanna do is I actually want to, when I press P, I want to set my pause variable, my Boolean property variable to true. So what I'll do over here in the actuators is I'm gonna add a property actuator and I'll connect it up so it's gonna, uh, this is gonna be triggered as well as this, the actual suspending of the scene. And we'll choose the property, it's called paused, and I'm gonna set the value to true. Okay, so when you press P, the very first time you press P, it's gonna suspend the game and it's going to uh, set this property to true it's pause. Now this probably doesn't actually do anything on its own, but just a way of keeping track for us and the logic of our logic in the game, uh, what, uh, what, what state we're in. 
So let's go ahead and add the exact same thing again, but to switch in the other direction. So what I'll do, actually first before I do that, what I have to do is actually say, hey, if the game is not paused, in other words, if this property is false, then we're going to pause the game and we're going to make it true. And then we'll do the exact opposite. So we actually need another sensor over here. And the sensor is going to be a property sensor. And we'll check the paused. And the pause that we're checking for is false. And I'll connect this up to the end as well. So I kind of rushed through that. But what this really means is if I press P and the game is not paused, paused is false, which it isn't by default. It's, it's not Pause, it's false by default. So if I press P and it's not paused, it's going to pause the actual scene, it's going to suspend it, and it's going to set the pause to true. So now that this variable knows, or this property knows, that the game is uh, now paused. Okay, let's go ahead and do the exact opposite. I'm going to name these logic bricks though. So this one will be P. I'll press enter, I'll click on this one. Um, I'm going to say if game not paused, I'll press enter. And when you scroll up or scroll down to zoom in, you'll see that better. If game, I'll say if not paused, that'll show a bit better. And this is going to be pause game, and this is going to be set paused t, t for true. Okay, so now I can collapse all these. Uh, if you need to catch that to pause the video, you can right now, but I'll collapse all these. And I'll do the exact same thing again. I'll make four more logic bricks with the end in the middle uh, for the opposite direction. So I'm going to add a P uh, keyboard sensor. I actually could reuse this one, but I'm not going to bother to keep the, this, this whole window uh, kind of simple. So this is going to be a P logic brick. Actually, it just names it P.001. We're going to use the P key. I'm going to add another sensor. It's going to be a property sensor uh, right there. And so if paused is true, T-R-U-E, then what do we want to have happen? Well, we want to resume the game, so I'm going to use the scene actuator, and I'll connect that up, and we're going to resume the scene that's called game. Okay, I have to connect this property up to this second and, so that if you press P and the game is paused, it's going to make it uh, resume. And we want to uh, change the variable property back to false because when we the game was not paused, we set the property to true. So if I add another property or I need to add another property actuator and I'll connect it up, I'm going to set the uh, or sign the, the paused property to false. And so I'm going to set paused F. That's what that one will be. And this one, I think, is set pause uh, T. So hopefully that makes sense. The second time around with these last four logic bricks, or five, including the and, if the game, if you press P, and if, and I'll name this, if paused, uh, and that's true. So if you press P and the game is paused, it's going to resume it or unpause the actual scene, and it's going to set that variable back to, or the property back to, false is not paused. I hope that makes sense. Um, it just takes a little bit of getting used to these logic bricks. The last thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to make this one resume, if I can type, resume game, and I'm going to collapse them all. And the last thing I need to do here is actually move this pause physical object into the middle of the screen. And I believe I moved it down by three on the Y axis. So I got to move it up positively on the Y global axis. So I'm going to add a couple more actuators. I'm going to add a motion actuator. And I'm actually going to collapse it because when you collapse it, you can actually move it up in this stack. So if I, um, if I maybe name this one move up, and if I collapse it now, I can move it up, <laughs> I can move it up uh, to match because it's going to go with, with these ones and I'm going to connect it up. So when you uh, pause the game, uh, which is what this whole top section is, it's going to move it up and I'm going to move it up um, three on the Y axis. Uh, so three in the positive direction and it's not going to be the local so I'll uncheck that. Now, sometimes if you hold down the P, 
it might actually move it up continuously very very quick you won't even see it so on the p on both of them actually on the keyboard sensor i'm going to enable tap and that will make sure that when you press p it's not doing it 60 times per second with the game so i'll do that as well with my p down here tap and i'll uh, collapse that one now and so now when you press p and the game is not paused it'll move the pause up it'll pause the game and it'll set the variable to pause and let's go ahead and add another motion actuator to move it back down to hide it so I'm going to add a motion actuator. I can connect it up to the bottom ones. I'm going to say, or name it, move down. And we'll make it simple motion. We're going to move it in uh, three on the Y axis in the negative direction. So negative three and not local. And it's set to tap. So that will be good. There are quite a lot of logic bricks here, but this is sort of where we're getting deeper into creating things and making them work with these logic bricks so we don't have to type any code in our game. Okay, let's go ahead and do a quick uh, save actually. I'll do Control S, I'll save to my uh, wherever I am. This is pause game and I'll save Blender file. Sure. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to the actual game. So I'll go back to my game scene. This is where I have to select my camera and overlay the, uh, the HUD scene. So to do that, I'll select my camera just by right-clicking on its border. I'm going to add an always sensor because we always want to overlay that pause scene. I'm going to add a scene actuator right there. I'm going to make this bigger so you can see it. I don't need to make the properties anymore, so I can get rid of that with the N key on my keyboard. I'm going to connect these up so we're always going to be overlaying a scene. Um, we're not restarting a scene here. We are adding an overlay scene, and it's going to be the pause HUD screen. Okay, so we're always overlaying the pause HUD screen. Let's go ahead and make this a bit smaller. Let's go ahead and scroll up or down to make that a bit bigger in our window. And I'll save. Let's go ahead and try this out. I'll press P on my keyboard and it's falling. And if I press P, pause shows up. It actually pauses the game in mid physics. As you can see, that cube is sort of just hovering there in midair. But I can press P again and the game resumes and my pause works. The last thing I'll do in this video is I want to enable the mouse when you pause the game. By default, when you play your game, your mouse cursor disappears, right? If I press P, it goes away. And that's good. That might actually uh, help you not have issues, especially in games where you're controlling things with the mouse. If you're controlling things with the mouse actuator, like in a first-person shooter, you actually don't want the mouse to be there. But when you press P or, or whatever you press to pause the game, you want the mouse cursor to show up so you can maybe move your window or change your options. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to our HUD scene uh, right there. And with the pause object selected, I'm going to add a few more logic bricks. This is uh, quite an easy step. I'm going to add a mouse actuator. And it's right there. And I'll uh, maybe make this one uh, visible. So this visibility option, there's the mouse look actuator, which has a whole bunch of stuff to make you know a first person shooter work. Uh, but I don't want that, I just want mouse visibility. And I'm gonna click on visible, and I'm gonna collapse this, or maybe I'll name it first, show mouse, and I will connect it up to the first and, because we want when you pause the game, which is the first chunk of logic bricks, to show the mouse, and I'll collapse it and I'll move it up. You gotta have to keep track of it. There we go. So these four belong to that top end. And we are showing the mouse, we're making it visible. I'll do the exact opposite. So I'll add another mouse actuator. We're gonna uncheck visible to make it light and I'll connect it to the bottom end. So now when you pause the game, the mouse will show up and when you unpause the game, the mouse will go away. Let's go ahead and test that out. I'll do a quick save and I'll go back to my uh, game scene. I'll press P and then I'll press P to pause my game. And as you can see, I have my mouse cursor back and I press P again the mouse cursor goes away and the pause is hidden again. All right, that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.